All right, Daryl, thanks so much for chatting with us, man. I know um, everyone back home in the States will be happy to, to hear from you on ESPN. You've been here now in the UK for a couple of months. Um, they're playing at Barnsley and now here, look at you in a playoff, you know, which is absolutely huge because one of the first things that I was told when I moved here to the UK was that championship playoffs, this is the real football. Forget the Premier League and all the glitz and glam. This is where the real football happens. So um, do you still feel kind of like you, it's a surreal moment? No, for sure. I think throughout my entire time, you know, every single game has been a surreal moment. And you look at the last game, just being able to finally step out on the field with fans as well and in a playoff match, like you could just see the culture, see the kind of environment. And it's it still is a surreal moment. And then, you know, tomorrow, you know, you go and do it again at Swansea. So it's you know, it's, a, it's a crazy moment for me. And, you know, I think it's, uh, it's something I, you know, I still have to take in. I know, I was thinking it's such an unfortunate thing that obviously because of the pandemic, you've not gotten to see the full, you know, force of the fan base, especially in the championship. Um, but, you know, they still managed to come out there with a Star Spangled banner for you and some nice jackets and whatnot. Just walk me through, you know, as a boy from America coming all the way over to England, and you even said when you just joined that it was always your dream to play in England, of course. Um, just seeing that, um, is it kind of like goosebumps? No, for sure. I think... I think, you know, any any athlete, you know, they love playing in front of fans and, you know, I love it. And then, of course, you know, being able to, you know, live out my dream by playing here and then, you know, have the support from all the people back home is phenomenal. So, I mean, I mean as you said, you know, stepping on the field and seeing an American flag or see someone, you know, cheering my name, you know, it, you know, it makes you feel good. And, you know, it knows that it makes you feel like, you know, all the work that you've done, you know, and, you know, all the work you to do. I mean, it's still nice to have that support, that following behind you, you know, from even though it's across across the ocean, you know, it's still it's still nice to have those people around. And overall so far now, your time at Barnsley, I guess, how would you, you know, describe it? Because just reading some of the comments as well from the fan base, everyone's excited about you because they say not only do you have that personality that, you know, we associate Americans with, but you play with that personality as well. So um, how would you describe your time? Because I know there's always a little culture culture shock sometimes. No, I think my time has been, um, I mean, it's been different. I kind of expected it to be different. I know because of COVID, I knew that, you know, you know, obviously I'm not able to, you know, go out and, you know, see things and actually truly, you know, see the entire country. But I mean, in terms of, you know, my experience, it's went well. I mean, on on the field, I think, you know, the team has done phenomenally. I mean, now we're now we're in we're in playoffs and, you know, we're one of the top sides in the division. And then on top of that, you know, outside the field, I think, you know, fans, you know, living here in Barnsley and, you know, kind of being in the culture is something that I, you know, I've been able to enjoy and something that, you know, it's a change in experience that I've always you know looked and you know wanted to have and then now of course i mean just tell me the good the bad the ugly because for everyone watching back home they just want to know a taste of what it's like we of course have the rights for the championship on espn stateside so you know we're trying to feed that culture there um how would you you know walk uh, an american through who that's probably considering to come play over here in the championship no i think it's um you know it's a, it's a little bit different i think um obviously in the states you know i think i think soccer in the states is it's growing it's big but at the same time you know you realize you know american football basketball those might be bigger sports but in here, I think you can see the fan base. You can see the connection with the club and, you know, the fans. And that's, you know, it's great. You can walk around town and people will people will notice you. You know, everyone's everyone's kind of a Barnsley fan here. And then even on social media, you know, you can just see the passion in fans. And, you know, it, it's it's great to see that because, you know, it, it shows, you know, that their connection, their support that they have for you and, you know, the belief that they have in, in the team. And I think it's great to, you know, kind of have that connection between, you know, the, the club and its fans. And I think I think it's something that in English football is very, very apparent. And then comparing that um, with MLS, because, of course, I've, I've spoken to a ton of players, uh, DeAndre Yedlin being one recently, even a good friend of ours, Jack Harrison, who I know he's English, but, of course, played a lot in MLS before coming back here. And one of the things that they said is that, you know, DeAndre said, in MLS, you lose a match, and everyone kind of puts their arm around you and says, it's okay, champ, we go again in the next one. Here, you lose a match, and it's just like, geez, you could easily become public enemy number one, your teammates have something to say, the coach has something to say, but you know, that's good because it builds that character. It's, it's the real world for football, as some people would say. Um, how did you cope with that? Or do you feel like it's almost made you a better player? No, I mean, for me, I, I have always kind of, I, I've always kind of been a social person. I love social media. I love, you know, interacting with fans and it's great. But at the same time, you know, I realize that as an athlete, you know, you're, you're in the, you're in the public eye, you know, in terms of, you know, after the game, people are going to, have things to say whether it be good or bad and for me that's kind of been something that as you know my career just started I've tried to learn how to 
had to kind of block that out a little bit and, you know, kind of focus on the game, focus on what I can do in training and, you know, how I can improve, you know, rather than, you know, listening to all the other, uh, you know, the other noise that people might have to say. And, you know, I think that kind of is a problem because sometimes it, you know, it's nice to hear people say good things, but at the same time, it can also, you know, you don't want to get too high, you don't want to get too low. And I think being able to, you know, manage and, you know, gauge, you know, how much you let social media and all those comments influence you is a, you know, it's a big piece of playing and being a professional. And what's been the biggest um, change, I suppose, for the better that you've noticed, even though it's been such a short period of time that you've been here at Barnes, but what's been, I suppose, the biggest change on, on how you've had to adapt with um, the pace of football here? No, I think I, um, you know, this this season, you know, we're already in, uh, you know, middle of the season, so I was kind of, you know, thrown in, and I was, you know, I, I was kind of had to adjust very quickly. But I think, you know, luckily being, you know, being with the guys, being with the staff, I think everyone kind of integrated me, you know, very very quickly. And you know, I think I, I'm still learning. I still have, you know, a lot more to learn about the league. But you know, luckily being able to be around those. Uh, you know, you know, this group, I think it's been great for me because I've gotten to, you know, adjust to the style of play, adjust to the speed, adjust to the, you know, the culture. And, you know, after talking to some guys, you know, they've given me tips, they've given me, you know, tools to, you know, make my life easier and make the team, the group's uh, life easier. Who's been one of those people, I suppose, in terms of teammates that's helped make your life easy over here? Victor, uh, Adebayo, I mean, he, uh, he, him and I, I mean, we're, we're, we're both, uh, both of our parents, you know, from Nigeria. I mean, he's actually, you know, born there and stuff like that. But, you know, he, he and I have a, have a good relationship. He's a, he's a good guy for sure as well. And what's been the chat, um, you know, back home, I suppose, the reaction, you know, in Oklahoma. And then, of course, you leave friends and teammates as well um, back in Orlando. Uh, are we going to see a few Barnsley shirts? running around Oklahoma soon. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've already I've already seen a few pictures uh, or like some some things on social media or something that uh, have been sent to me in that in that way, but no, it's great. It's as I said before, you know, it's great to have support everywhere you uh, everywhere you are and I know from Oklahoma, you know, there's not necessarily tons of people who, you know, come out of Oklahoma, so it's great to, you know, have that following and have that support back home. How's your um, Yorkshire accent coming along? Uh, it's non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not there, I'm be honest. Maybe maybe if we're here longer, but only only two, three months, I don't think it's uh, been able to settle in yet. Have you gotten into the tea drinking culture, though? Absolutely not. I, I, <laughs> I, I still... Because my thing is, I just, I just never really... I never really drank tea or coffee or any of that stuff to begin with. So, I, I don't know. I just haven't, haven't been in the culture for that, I guess. I like I like oh the bis goodness. I like the biscuits no and tea. cookies though. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair play. I mean, I I came over drinking only like one cup of tea a day, and now I think I drink probably four. I don't know if that's healthy, but at least it's better than than coffee. Yeah. So we'll see if we get you there. Yeah, we'll see maybe. if we get you there. <laughs> well, I mean, let's talk obviously the second leg of this playoff now. Um, up against Swansea, we know Swansea. You know, they would look in this matchup as the heavyweights. You know, they have recent Premier League experience as well, but. I think even they will tell you that a one goal cushion isn't really that comfortable and you guys now going into this it's all to play for but one of the things I've learned as well about Barnes is like you guys almost seem to thrive in these treat every game as a cup final matches um how'd you do it no I mean I think we go into the game you know thinking thinking exactly that uh it's just like every other match I think we go into the game I mean we know we know there are going to be fans you know they're going to be cheering we know how you know great of a side they are but at the same time you know we recognize our quality and we recognize what we've done this year and at the end of the day you know we know that we want to be in Wembley we know that we want to you know go out there and you know win the match and I think I think you know that's what we're going to go into the game and do you know I think this team this team you know we're capable of anything so I'm I'm not really uh, I'm, not, I'm not too worried I think I think we just go out there and you know we show what we can do and you know we we give a hundred percent and you know, Barnsley's been through like a, a roller coaster as well of emotions, at least if you look back in the la last 10 months, you know, from flirting with dropping to coming right back up to being exactly where they are now. I know, again, you've still been there, um, you know, for a short period of time, but what do you feel is, is this current group of players' biggest strength? I think it's kind of like the family. I think, you know, starting from the players to the staff, you know, I think everyone kind of knows, knows their job and, you know, everyone's kind of in a... Uh, you know, in a, in a community kind of feeling, we all want to work for each other. We all want to better each other. And I think we go into every single game, you know, as a, as a, you know, a group rather than just a, a group of individuals. And I think that that's kind of the main reason we go out there and, you know, get the results that we do because we go out there and, you know, we fight for every result together with our brothers by our side. And then a couple of months ago, of course, you're in MLS. Now here you are in the championship playoffs. Um, you technically are, you know, a match away 
from walking out at Wembley in a playoff final, which will be there for, and then after that, it could be a birth of the Premier League. Um, do you even think that far yet? Or do you, as you say, just kind of say, hang on, let's just take it game guy by game? No, yeah, I definitely, uh, definitely the second one. I mean, of course, in the back of your head, it's like, oh, we're, you know, we're so close. But at the same time, we, we still realize that, you know, there's a job to do. And, you know, we, we take our, as I said before, you know, we take our training step by step. And, you know, after the after the game, you know, we will look back and, you know, when it comes to when it comes to Wembley, if it comes to Wembley, then, you know, that's when we start thinking about it. That's when we start, you know, getting or getting our hopes high and stuff like that. But for now, you know, we focus on what we can do in the present and then let the future uh, come in the future. <laughs> and speaking of the future, I mean, I have to go here because, if, for example, if say you do either get the Premier League uh, berth or you don't. Um, and you, I assume you'd want another crack at it, especially as you said that, you know, growing up, it has been a dream of yours to play in England in some ca capacity. Um, do you feel like you're just getting started in a career here? No, I mean, I think for me, uh, you know, I, I came here originally to, you know, grow as a player, to, you know, grow as a, a person and kind of, uh, you know, help the squad out and, you know, live the experience. And I think for me, no, of course, I think it's just kind of, it's just kind of the beginning of, you know, my career in general. I mean, even in Orlando, it's just, just, had just started. So, I mean, in terms of, in terms of everything, you know, coming, I'm, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited that I know, um, I know I'm just going to keep growing and, you know, things are just going to keep, you know, unfolding and, you know, it's exciting for sure. Do you still feel like unfinished business back in Orlando? I mean, I just want to grow as a player, whether it be in Orlando, whether it be whether it be anywhere here in England. Have you been able to still keep up with the boys back home? Because obviously there's the time difference and all of that too. But and now you've clearly got a lot of it on your own plate. No, yeah, for sure. I think um, you know there's been later nights <laughs> where I'm where I'm playing <laughs> games or uh, or on the phone or something like that with them just because of the time difference. But of course, of course, I always. Uh, I'm always in touch with them and, you know, always talking. And over here, um, playing as well, just in the championship in the short period of time, um, who's been probably like your favorite person to come up against? Like whether you were kind of starstruck or you were like, whoa, I did that. Favorite person to come up against? I mean, it was probably in the Chelsea match. I think it would probably be, you know, it'd probably be one of one of Conte, Zuma, Rudiger, you know, one of them. So those are probably probably the favorite favorites um, right there that I've ever come against since I've been here. Kante, that's a good one to come up against because he's everywhere, like water. I don't know about coming <laughs> up against. I don't know if you want to come up against him, but <laughs> I, I think you'd rather be, be on his side. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I guess it would be better to have him on your side. Um, someone that you probably would have come up against and you do have on your side, Christian Pulisic, you know, talking U.S. men's national team now. You're also on that roster. Um, throwing it ahead to summer, there's a lot going on because the Gold Cup is going on. You do have certain matches like against my team Jamaica but we're not going to get into that just yet but um I know since now you're thinking of the playoffs but have you had a thought of probably goals that you want with the national team at least in this recent future no I mean I think I think collectively the national team and myself you know everyone has kind of talked about wanting to change how you know the world views you know American soccer and I think you know with the group you know with the quality and you know with the matches I mean we know that we, you know, we have the opportunity to do that right now. And I think with these, you know, all these upcoming matches, Gold Cup, you know, Nations League and all these things, I think, you know, it's, it's a time to prove. And I think a lot of the a lot of the players recognize that we have the quality, we have the group to, you know, be able to, you know, change people's opinion. And, you know, for me, I would love to be a part of that. You know, I want to, you know, help the team push forward and, you know, be a be a big important factor in that group as well. I mean, I ask this, of course, to everyone because we get excited um, whenever we get to talk to American players around this side, whether it's Pulisic, you know, we've spoken to Gio Reyna, um, Weston McKinney as well. And I always ask them if they feel like this is the best, I suppose, period for American players that we've ever had. I mean, I know we've had big names in the past, too, you know, the Tim Howards, the Landon Donovans, etc. But now it just seems like there's so much more. Um, and you obviously are a part of that now. Do you feel like this is the best moment that we've seen probably in the history of U.S. soccer? Yeah, no, I think it's um, I think it's the moment. I mean, it, it's crazy. I think the squad is phenomenal, and you know, a lot of the players are super young at that. So you know, come coming to these uh, these next competitions, these next World Cups, it's you know, it's it's exciting for sure. And I, you know, I even know that you know after after our age, I mean, I'm only twenty, but after our age, you know, there's still tons and tons of you know com upcoming talent. So it's just gonna keep getting you know better and you know bigger and better. And I think that's it's exciting times for uh, U.S. soccer for sure.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.